Hello and welcome to This Week in Laker Football. I'm Tyler Keith alongside West Bloomfield Lakers head coach Zach Hilbers as he enters his second season at the helm for West Bloomfield and we kick off a new season here at West Bloomfield High School. Early game Thursday against Chippewa Valley coming up this week, but it's a big matchup. These are two really talented teams. So what are you looking for out of your Lakers as they get out there in the swamp in week one? No, we just came off uh, our first scrimmage yesterday where we got a chance to like kind of compete against somebody else and hit somebody else. And, you know, you kind of been going at it against each other for so long, whether it's lifting in the summer or like last week with our two a days. It was just, I guess, a noticeable, refreshing boost to, I guess, our energy and morale. And that should only be, you know, tenfold as you go into your first game. I just, I guess, hope I don't have the blood pressure spike like I did last year. Yeah, we talked about this in the past with with this team just in the past couple of weeks at OAA Football Media Day. You're returning a lot of veteran players, particularly on the offensive side, returning a couple of players on the defensive side that had very big roles near the end of the year, but all of them collectively have seen playoff time and have seen important football. How does that factor in as you try to set the tone for 2024? Oh, it's really invaluable. Helps a ton, like just because they know what to expect expect in uh, high pressure moments and high pressure situations. You know, there's one thing we tell the kids is like football, you'll always be faced with adversity. I can't tell you when it's going to happen or in what form it's going to happen, but it will happen. And just for those guys that have kind of been in those situations and know the ebbs and flows of it and how to steady the ship when they need to it. Uh, yeah, hopefully it pays off. I'm taking a look at this team on the offensive side of the ball, you're returning seven starters. That is a huge benefit for a team that last season scored 33 points per game, had a number of blowout victories, including as you march toward playoff time. Talk about that veteran leadership and how important that's going to be for putting points up on the board and really putting your best foot forward against a tough schedule. Well, we hope it, you know, gets us off to a good start of the year. It's funny, a year ago, we were kind of sitting, looking at the inverse of it, where we thought we had a really experienced defense and an inexperienced offense, and we were hoping our defense would carry our offense, and I guess our offense kind of got shot out of a cannon, and we're just ready to go from day one. So you never, I guess, quite know what to expect, and as soon as you think you got it figured out, usually the opposite happens. Uh, but, you know, if you sit and look at it objectively, you think, like, yeah, a lot of those guys made a lot of really big plays last year and they're really good football players and we just hope that they can do that again when their number's called. One thing that does stand out and that you made a really big point of at OAA Media Day is that your offensive line, your line is really where the veteran presence of this yeah. team is across the board. How important is that going to be, especially with the youth on the defensive side of the ball? You know, we have like uh, the first three days of practice here at West Bloomfield, we do a lock-in where we all spend the night here and spend a lot of time together and get a chance to talk to the kids. And even just talking with some of those linemen, uh, I think it was Tuesday night, we're sitting out on the picnic tables and I just kind of asked them, like, how much more confident do you guys feel right now or comfortable do you feel right now? And they were just laughing. They're like, we didn't know what we were doing last year. And now I'm like, you never know exactly what's going to happen, obviously, but they know what they're supposed to do. And, you know, I guess there's a big difference between learning on the fly, getting like thrown into the fire metaphorically, or just, like I said, b having been through those battles and knowing what to expect and knowing what to do before you even get there. So we, we hope that, you know, pays off uh, for us this week, next week, and every week going forward. It helps you to set the tone, too, because everything really starts from the trenches yeah. in the game of football. And, you know, you got some pretty good new additions coming in, too. You lost some players on the offensive side on that line, but bringing in a guy like Jay Gardenhire, 6'8", yeah. 350 pounds, experienced in winning football, too, at the high school level. What has he added to that offensive line room? Well, first of all, I guess the size, like you said, when, when I heard there was a kid from New Jersey that was moving here, it was six foot eight, 350 pounds, I kind of rolled my eyes and said, yeah, okay, whatever. And then when him and his mom showed up, I was like, oh, <laughs> they were not exaggerating. Uh, and like you said, he, he played at a really high level in New Jersey in a really good program and a really good league. So he's just really used to all the same stuff. Like I mentioned about our kids that are returning. He's played at a really high level and a really competitive level. And he is used to having high standards for himself. So he's fit in pretty seam seamlessly. Like the hardest thing has been learning the language of what we call something versus what he called something in uh, New Jersey. And he's really picked that up. He's a smart kid and we expect him to hit the ground running. 
Speaking of new players on this team, you got a little bit of a problem. Yeah. And it's one of the best problems, I would think, a coach, especially yeah. a coach with some offensive experience in the quarterback's room in his past can have. Two really good quarterbacks on this team, Jamal Shakespeare returning this season, and then Bo Jackson coming in from Novi Detroit Catholic Central. T take us through what that scenario has been like for your team as you're developing this offense in the post-Rick Nance era. You know, you're right. Bo and Jamal have been outstanding. And to be honest, like Brody Pecor is on our team who started five games as a sophomore at quarterback yeah. and was 5-0 and uh, when Rick got hurt. And even our, our some of our young guys have been outstanding all summer, like Jackson Carver. I can't believe how much better he's gotten, how much he's grown. Um, so we really have like four or five guys that we could feel confident at any point we could put back there. And it's a really good problem to have. And they each ha kind of have their own unique skill sets. And that juggling match has been really a large part of our offensive practice this summer is you know we try to maximize all of their strengths and you know really get them all involved as much as we can so who's the starter well Bo's probably going to start and Jamal's going to play quarterback every single game um he's going to play all over the field he'll be a receiver he'll be a running back he's there'll be a free safety and he'll be a quarterback because he's frankly earned that um just from what he's done in previous years and what he's done this summer. And like we've really been impressed with him. And even our play yesterday, we went down and scrimmage River Rouge, scrimmage De La Salle, um, you know, scrimmage Dearborn Fordson. Like both of them just did what they had worked on in practice and played at a really high level. And talk about the effort, too, of your players in the offseason. We, I've read stories of Elijah and Cameron getting together with Bo and with Jamal and other guys from this team to even further hone their skills and get that work in outside of when the coaches are here. How does that play into getting your team ready for a season like you have coming ahead with nine playoff teams on that schedule? Yeah, the schedule's hard and it's daunting, and, but those guys are all pretty close. And, you know, we only have so much time that we can work with the kids and the fact that, you know, when the weather started turning in March, they wanted to go out there after school and throw a ball around and just kind of build some of that chemistry or refine some of that chemistry. It, it really gives you a head start to when you really get going in June. Then you look on that defensive side. We talked about the youth movement over there, but you look at the returning players. They were role players last year, but when they played their roles to a T, they made a huge impact. Guys like Jaden Allos with 30 tackles, two pick sixes in the in playoff time. Jonathan Edison with three interceptions over the season, and Will Espy, who, like you said, in those scrimmages had some big plays himself. What does that bring to that younger defense in 2024 as you're trying to, to match what you had out there last season? Yeah, a lot of those guys played in decent amounts and spots and made plays when they had their opportunity. And, you know, I feel confident in having them out there. And the more important thing is they feel confident. They feel like they got a ton of experience last year and they know what they're doing and they're, they're ready to go because um, they're not, I guess, second guessing things or trying to, you know, process on the fly. And that's where it can get you in trouble on defense sometimes if you're overthinking and not just reacting. And those guys are all just reacting right now. So, you know, we hope that rubs off on some of those guys getting their first shot, too. So as you go into this season, week one really sets the tone. We'll talk more about that in, later on in the program. But as you get out there those, that first week, what really is the focus of this team in 2024? And what are you doing to set that focus in motion from the jump? Really just be ourselves, like try to control the game on, at the line of scrimmage, like you mentioned, uh, eliminate our mistakes and just do what we do well. And sure, you're going to game plan for other teams. You're going to try to see what they do on offense and defense and try to exploit them as best you can. But we want to focus on ourselves. That's been our, our focus all summer. Let's do what we do well. Let's get better at it each, each and every week. What is the message of this team in 2024? Every team seems to have the identity. What do you think is that identity for this team? You know, it's funny. I never got too big into those things. So last year at this time, we didn't really have one. And it kind of came about about this week, right before you're coming into week one. And it was, you know, the, the burn the ships motto of like, we're going to leave everything behind and come together as a group. And it hasn't quite popped up yet, but I know it will. Like it always does. Like I said, uh, you're going to get put in adverse situations and we're going to get forged together one way or the other. And I kind of like the organic nature of when that happens instead of it kind of being something you're, you're forcing on kids or trying to teach them. Like it, we want it to be applicable and we want them to like see it. And we think we get a little bit more buy-in that way. 
They tell us broadcasters, don't come up with those signature lines. Let them come to you. It's the same thing for those team models. We'll get more into the team as we go forward. It's this week in Laker football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. We'll take a quick break coming up. A little bit more analysis on the team. Then we'll preview that big kickoff against the Chippewa Valley Big Reds happening at the Swamp. Stay tuned. You're watching and listening to This Week in Laker Football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. We've got news. Civic Center TV just reached 1 million views on YouTube. Over the years, we filed over 10,000 stories. We've covered local parades and events, life-saving efforts by first responders, remarkable accomplishments of local individuals, state championship athletic teams, and our area's history, government, and the people who volunteer to make our community better. Civic Center TV on cable, online, and on social media, now with over 1 million views on YouTube. Civic Center TV, thanks for watching. You're one in a million. Live, local, social. Dive into your community with the Splash Live. Coverage of events and exciting developments in the greater West Bloomfield area. Join Tyler Keefe, Kevin McIntosh, and the rest of our staff live out on the street or in our studio. Weekdays live on Comcast Channel 15 or on AT&T at Channel 99. Watch us online too on Facebook at Civic Center TV 15, on YouTube at Civic Center TV, or on our website, civiccentertv.com. Welcome back to This Week in Laker Football. I'm Tyler Keith, joined by West Bloomfield Lakers senior wide receiver Elijah Durham. Coming off an historic season for the L Boys in 2023, the second best overall receiving season in the history of this program in your first season on varsity, seventh most touchdowns for a Laker career. Reflect on that first season at the varsity level and just kind of your feelings on some of the amazing numbers you put up last year. Uh, I mean, for myself, I just had a lot, of pro a lot to prove, and everything was for the team. You know, I had to score for the teams, get my touchdowns for the team, you know, but a lot of it was just proving what I could do and, like, shutting, off, shutting out all the hate and all that, you know, just proving what I could do as a receiver. And that's something you and I talked about before last season, too, because when you came in, I asked you, what are you hoping to accomplish in your first season on varsity? You know you've got a lot of promise, but there are people that are saying some things about you that – you don't quite believe. So how did that motivate you as you started to see this is clicking, this is working last year? Uh, I mean, it motivated me a lot, you know, just like showing, as, like this year, people don't think like I can catch and run after the catch. I'm going to show them that. Like last year, they thought I was just a deep ball receiver, but this year I'm going to show them, you know, I can catch and run with the ball and just everything I can do. The top touchdown scorer on the team was Cameron Flowers. 14 touchdowns running and passing. Over here we got Elijah Durham last season. 11 touchdowns receiving last season. I think he can't run after the catch. You're going to see some improvement from Elijah in 2024 uh, in this season. And you know, answering back from last season, you were one of those impact players. It was you, it was Cameron, it was Rick in the skill positions, Brandon Davis, Swain. You come back in 2024. Now how do you take that next step? Uh... I feel like the next step is just bringing some young, younger guys like how I was last year and bringing them aboard, help, making them help out, making them get a role on this team and just building it from there, you know, because, I mean, we do have the guys from last year, me, Cam, Alos, but we need more guys to help, like younger guys, and we're just getting them more involved this year. And as you come into this year, too, uh, uh, and I talked to Coach Hilbers about this, kind of a good problem to have in the quarterback room. you got a lot of talent there between Jamal and, and coming back, Bo Jackson coming in. Brody Pecor has played a lot of quarterback in the last couple of seasons for this team. So how have you managed that as a wide receiver, working with different quarterbacks leading that offense? Uh, me and Jamal had a lot of, like, well, a lot of chemistry because, you know, I played JV my sophomore year. He, he was the quarterback. You know, we, we built a lot of chemistry there. And Bo, I mean, we've been working since he's transferred over, you know. So it's just good to have two good quarterbacks to work with, both really good, you know. Both will play, so, you know, it will just be great to have. Take me through the dynamic, too, behind some of that work behind the scenes that you mentioned, working with Jamal, working with Bo, working with Cameron and, and other guys over the offseason to take those next steps 
before you even hit practice for the first day. You know, what went into that decision for you guys as you approach the season? Uh, I mean, that loss in the semifinals, it was tough, you know, and we don't want that feeling again. So we just had to, like, we had to build. So we started it as soon as the season ended, you know, renting out indoor f fields just in the, in, the, in the cold, you know. When it got hot outside, we went on the field. It was just like work since the season ended. And that last game, you mentioned the Southfield A&T loss, five-point loss, came down to the last couple of plays. And look, you can say it's the last couple of plays that made the game go the way it went, but any football player will tell you, we had so many opportunities to go over the hump throughout that game. And it wasn't just the end that ultimately gave that final result. So how do you pass that message on to the younger guys? both in, on your side of the ball on offense, but also the defensive guys where there's a lot of youth there? Uh, the, the little things matter. Like, you know, everything matters. Nothing, like, nothing can be slacked off or, like, thrown away. You know, everything matters. So we just keep pushing that out. Like, every little detail matters. And for you, as you go into this season, you, you have that experience on the offensive side. You had a great season in 2024. Across the board for your team, what are some of the focuses for – the older players on this team, the veterans for this season that will ultimately help you get back where you were, but not just on the doorstep of Ford Field, getting to Ford Field and lifting that trophy up. Uh, leadership, you know, I've been saying to younger guys, we gotta, as seniors, we gotta show the younger guys like more and more and more, you know. It's just like, I mean, we gotta show them what it is, it's, like, it's like to be on varsity and how to play and how to mature and be a varsity player and, and help your team. Seeing the success of players at the next level, at this point, with the success you had as a junior, with, with the success you're very likely going to have as a senior, you're going to be in that position. And looking at guys like Donovan and Makari, both named captains at the University of Michigan, Samaj Morgan and his impact as a freshman last season at Michigan, how does that further motivate you coming into your last season here at WB? Uh, seeing them come out of pro a program that I'm still in, it, it, it's very motivating seeing like how it transfers over to the next level. And it, Maj, Samaj was just my teammate, so it's just like, that's crazy how he already got a big impact in the, on the college level. So, you know, I'm really excited to like further myself after this, this year. And lastly, what sort of advice maybe have those guys given to you as you continue on in this program and now are in their leadership roles they previously had going into your senior season? Uh, be motivating and keep working, you know. And, I, I just said it, the little things matter, you know, that they, they keep pushing that on. The little things do matter, and just a little distance between, uh, between Elijah Durham and A.J. Abbott for that next step up the rung of the ladder. He's 14 yards back from number six all time in receiving yards at West Bloomfield High School and just 877 yards back from the all-time record with Trey Mosley. Looking forward to another great season, Elijah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Elijah Durham from the West Bloomfield Lakers varsity football team, senior wide receiver, he and the L boys kick off the season this week, Thursday, 7 o'clock kickoff family fun night at West Bloomfield High School against the Chippewa Valley Big Reds. We'll preview that game and get, get a last outlook on the 2024 season after this short break with head coach Zach Hilders. You're watching and listening to This Week in Laker Football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Hello, my name is Danya Bazzi. I'm the superintendent of West Bloomfield School District. I want to congratulate Civic Center TV on hitting the amazing milestone of 1 million viewers. Your involvement in our community doesn't go unnoticed. We thank you for keeping our residents and community engaged in the latest and greatest news and information. I'm Danya Bazzi, and I'm proud to be one in a million. Hi, I'm Kevin McIntosh. Make sure to stay up to date on everything happening in the greater West Bloomfield area on the Splash Live weekdays right here on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Welcome back to This Week in Laker Football on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. I'm Tyler Keith, joined again by head coach Zach Hilbers. Big kickoff coming up a little bit early. We're playing Friday Night Lights on a Thursday night, kicking off the season against the Chippewa Valley Big Reds. 
exactly like last year, coming in against a contending team that has division titles, has playoff experience, much like you. They had a 9-3 and three season a year ago, didn't quite go their way. 10-3 and three for your team went your way a lot more than theirs, but that set the tone for last year. What are you looking at from the Big Reds in 2024 that's got your eye coming into week one? Well, they certainly have playmakers. They have for years, um, and they're... I guess the best thing I can say about them is they play in a really competitive division just like we do, and they're used to winning. And when you're used to winning, it becomes an expectation, a culture of your program. And we could tell that when we played them last year, that they just, they're just they going to do the little things the right way. They're going to be really hard to beat. And there's something about going into every day of practice and every week expecting to come out as a, as a victor. And uh, you can definitely tell that's like one of the things in the staples of their program. Yeah, returning seven starters themselves, including some key guys on defense, Eric Thomas Jr. And of course, their, their big time player is Deshaun Lanier, who's just such a dynamic guy mm -hmm. across all three phases. So as you match up against that, particularly for your defense, what are you really focusing on from this Chippewa Valley team to limit the impact of those playmakers with a youth movement on your defensive side? Yeah, like you said, he can hurt you, Deshaun can, in, in several different ways. So, you know, he's going to be a focal of any any game plan because he, he kind of has to be. His reputation precedes him. Uh, so, you know, he, he's definitely out there and he can hurt you, but he's not the only one. We know they had some uh, younger guys last year, too, that are probably ready to step up and take uh, – take on some bigger roles themselves. And, you know, there's a new quarterback, it's a new head coach over there. So at this point, honestly, we're, we're really guessing what they're going to be doing. Um, because in high school football, you get like the, the one scrimmage and you kind of see what they got. And other than that, you're going off of, you know, the past. And sometimes it's accurate, sometimes it's not. You guys learned a lesson a year ago. You came out to the Zenith Prep Kickoff Classic. You go up against Chippewa Valley. It is a back and forth game, an all out brawl. It comes down to that last drive. And that really is the identity of Chippewa Valley last season. Six of their, tw of their 12 games were decided by 10 points, and they won 50% of those. So, you know, what does that mean for your team as you come into week one, knowing that this is always a really competitive week where we learn a lot about both teams? Yeah, and I think part of that is, like, honestly, no one's really ready to play a full game. We've been wearing pads for, I don't know, five or six days as a team. You know, we've been lifting, conditioning, and doing, you know, your team camps in the summer. But, like, with real pads on and tackling and blocking, it's been about five days. And then we have two more padded practices, and now we're playing. So you kind of find yourself throughout that first game. And a lot of ways that happened to us last year. And luckily we made the right plays at the very end when we needed to, to win, because it, obviously it could have gone the other way for us. And, you know, b because of all those factors, and then, you know, like I said, being a, a good team and it's well-led and competitive, like we know it's going to be a dogfight in some point or, or another, in some way or another, I mean, and uh, we just, we hope we're ready for it. So then what's the word in the coaching room or, or as you're in those meetings with your players, understanding the context of last year, but also the, the fa simple fact of the matter that there hasn't been that prep time, but you still got to be ready. Yeah, the job's still the job. Just because, you know, we don't get as much time as if I could plan a high school season out that we would have, like, we're still playing and it still counts and we're going to give it everything we got and we're going to lean on our experience like we had talked about. and you know, hope it, hope it can carry us. And when it comes down to it, guys, like we, we have to run, we have to block, we have to tackle. Lakers taking on Chippewa Valley, seven o'clock kickoff Thursday, August 29th at the Swamp. Family fun night before and all the coverage of Laker football all season long right here on Civic Center TV and 89.3 Lakes FM. Obviously, you come out of week one with a win. That's the big overall goal. But what else are you looking for from your team as you kick off the season against the Big Reds? I mean, we hope to win. We just really just want to get out there and compete and be ourselves and, you know, not make mistakes and just do what we do well, right? Hopefully, you know, we want to control the line of scrimmage, be clean on special teams and just give ourselves a chance to win. You know, that's kind of been our, I guess, model. And uh, if we follow it more often than not, we find success. And there's no 100% there's no you know, in this business. So like you can do everything right sometimes and still lose, I guess is what I'm saying. We just hope it doesn't happen this week. You take those risks, sometimes they work out. It worked out a year ago, two-point conversion, 22-21. That was in Detroit this time. It is in West Bloomfield, 7 o'clock kickoff. Our coverage will begin with This Week in Laker Football just before on Civic Center TV, on 89.3 Lakes FM, across our social media, and that of the West Bloomfield School District. For the entire team at West Bloomfield High School and us at Civic Center TV, I want to thank you for tuning in to This Week in Laker Football.